is going on guys for crooks here and welcome back to the channel so in today's video we are going to be doing yet another 1vx combat analysis we will be doing one on the magic of dragon knight as well as the magic of sorcerer now we do have some background footage here i will go ahead and let this play out while i talk through now we are going to start on the magic of dragon knight i'm currently running burning spell weave iron blood Magna Incarnate and Mark and Ring of Majesty with One Piece training just to give you guys a little bit of a reference. But before we get into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons. This channel would not be possible without you and also my YouTube members you help keep the channel afloat. So to start with this 1VX here, it's nothing special. We're running Molten Whip. We're able to actually burst down a Wolfie Boy from 100 to full, which is not going to happen too many times. So we've already got one kill to our name. We got two kills to our names, two, three kills to our name. There's really nothing fancy here, guys. And these guys are just Zerglings. Um, that's, that's really all there is to it. So we are keeping our wings up. We have a Seething Fury add on counter to keep track of our Molten Whip procs. So right now, I'm just kind of playing the kite game. Um, wings is very underrated on the Magic Dragon Knight. If you have not run them before, please try to slot them on your bar because there's so many projectile based classes in the game right now especially with the heavy attack night blades heavy attack dk's hitting you for 40k heavy attacks as well as night blades hitting you with the spectral bows and chlorians it minimizes all the damage by about 50 percent so right here what i always like to try to do I always try to keep a times three molten fury whip proc up because you just never know when you need to go in for the burst now right here is more of a just um throw your line out to see what you can catch type of move I have my Iron Blood right here up. I also have my Burning Spell Weave. What I typically like to do is when Iron Blood is up, I like to go super offensive because even if you get punished, you're not going to get punished nearly as hard as if not having it up, right? So while you have the 30% mitigation from Iron Blood, if you guys are unfamiliar with what this set does, it does give you 30% damage mitigation on a really reliable cooldown with a 66.6% .6 uptime, but it does impose a really terrible snare on you. So I did kind of throw out my ult there just to see if I get a quick kill and I could not. Uh, that's a really good habit to get into on your DK is to just throw your ults out whenever you can to abuse the battle or passive to get your resources back. Now, let me explain what I did right here. If you guys are unfamiliar again with iron blood it does put the snare on you and one way to get around the snare now it is unpurgeable mind you you cannot just purge the snare away it's, when it's on you it's on you one mechanic i really like to abuse on my demigod magic of drag Knight pvp build, which i will leave a card to in the description as well as the top right hand corner which is what we're using is how to be hop or bunny hop now Notice right here we have Iron Blood, so theoretically we should be slowed by 50% on top of all the other snares that are currently on us, right? But we're not. We're still able to have this amount of speed and momentum. The way you do this is you roll dodge, and if you time your jump perfectly after you roll dodge, because the roll dodge, you're not snared during your roll dodge. You have full speed and control. As long as you jump at the tail end of your roll dodge, you maintain that momentum. And then if you keep jumping thereafter, you keep maintaining that momentum. It takes a little bit of practice, but um, even I haven't mastered it. But it's very, very helpful for you to close the gap or put some distance between you and the players. If you decide to run our blade, you don't have to. I know it's a turnoff for a lot of people, but I swear by it. It's such a new friendly set. Um, I've played this game for seven years, and I think it's the best set in the game. So right now, all I'm trying to do, again, I did another B hop roll dodge uh, just to get distance between me and the players chasing me there's about six or seven or so so all the only thing i'm doing right here is trying to keep my buffs and debuffs up i know it's iron blood proc which is um, thank god because our health got really really low here we have a bunch of debuffs like power of the light we have minor vulnerability we have this this curse thing or whatever it puts on you you take increased damage it's very important for you to also worry about your resource pools now on the dragon knight you utilize your pools very evenly if you are always capped out on your Magicka and low on Stamina, or vice versa, you're always capped out on your Stamina low on Magicka, you're doing something wrong with the class. You need to utilize both pools very evenly because that's the way the class functions. That's just the best way to do it. Now, right here we are keeping wings up. I'm very comfortable with standing here in this AoE because I have Iron Blood up. And plus, I've already roll dodge a couple times. My roll dodge 
timer is not off of cooldown quite yet so if i try to roll dodge it's gonna bring me down into like 3k stamina so i have to be really really careful here i go for a wrestle pool to uh, not only get resources back but also it gives me major mending uh, wings buff debuff I'm not really worried about anything right now other than surviving okay wings up as always iron blood procs um, right here was a leap just to get my resources back okay and keep in mind um, a little bit ways back here I did throw a fossilize I forgot to mention this so this fossilize right here um, you have passives that anytime you use an urban heart ability it gives you stamina back so do not be afraid to toss out stuns just to get your stamina back see i have a lot more magicka that i do stamina so even though fossilized costs like 3500 i'm willing to throw out the spell to get a thousand stamina back so um we'll go for it a little bit here just kind of catch up to uh where we were so again just trying to dodge out here keep my wings up as much as possible super underrated skill i pop a potion and my leave i'm immediately back up to full i'm fishing for kills at this point I'm certain that most people have let their buffs fall out chasing me this long and we don't get lucky when we get any kills so um, always time out your leaps when your burning spell weave is up if you can and ideally if you can get your burning spell weave and your iron blood up that's the best time to burst someone because the odds of them countering you is very very low right here I make a terrible terrible play I think I've played this perfectly up until this point but I for whatever reason go for a molten whip right here a times three molten whip this guy has 34k health there is no reason i should be risking this whip right here this is a complete misplay on my part luckily i wasn't punished if i got stunned right there i'm dead luckily i was able to get to my back bar and because i was able to get to my back bar in time my iron blood does proc which saves me from this death yet again so we are just spamming out the hills as much as we can iron blood coming in completely clutch we are really low on resources we dropped down to 1.5k health at one point we even get lower yeah 2k health Get some Cree Hills really nice. I'm doing nothing but trying to survive. This is a northern storm. No point in me trying to burst. Well, I don't have anything to burst them with. We have zero resources left. So the only thing I'm thinking in my head at this point is, okay, I need to phone these guys around this wall here and just go for a Hail Mary play when my potion comes up, when my ultimate comes up. Right here was a complete desperation rapid region oh excuse me a heavy stack resto pool this gives you resources back as well as it gives you major mending to help um with your healing we're able to roll dodge one time iron blood is still up for three seconds what i do here i'm priming up my ceiling fury counter right here i notice everyone is funneling into this area because i've kind of planned this out a little bit i get a triple collapse with engulfing flames and right here i actually panic and I'm not sure if I can use Flames of Oblivion, Oblivion one more time in order to get my times three Molten Whip proc. And quite frankly, if I take a stun here while my Iron Blood's about to fall off, you notice it only has one second here on my bar. I'm probably going to die because I'm not going to be able to break CC because I only have 3.6k uh, stamina pool. I should have popped a potion, but I just didn't think about it at the time. I just wanted to get this leap off and get resources. Luckily, this is why I'm saying toss out your olds as much as possible to fish for kills right here i got really lucky this wasn't even planned i was able to close out this kill right here and maybe they didn't have their buffs up they ran out of stamina they wasn't paying attention but people get complacent when they're chasing you and you're able to turn uh, quite easily so the 1vx at this point is pretty much over you just have to play smart use your resources efficiently and just use your terrain to your advantage. So this player decides to remain. I mean, I, I was already thinking with seven people, this player by himself is definitely not gonna be able to take me out, uh, especially with uh, Iron Blood up. <laughs> so we go in from the Wolf Whip, and we're just gonna whip, whip him down. There's really nothing uh, more to note here other than don't let him have any room to breathe. So that is going to be the Magicka Dragonite 1VX. Let me know if you guys want me to break this down even further going forward in my videos, but we will go ahead and hop into the Magic Sorcerer. This is going to be a really short one, but I want to stress to you how important it is to line up your combo on the Magic Sorcerer and how important timing really is. 
All right, guys, welcome back. Hopping over into the Magic of Sorcerer. So this is a very unique build. Um, this is stacking raw spell damage. We're using Burning Spell Weave, Iron Blood, pretty much the exact same sets I'm using from the Magic Dragon setup. I just tossed on my Magic of Sorcerer, and it works really, really well. I don't know if you guys saw my video about how useless Max of Magic is. Well, I wanted to prove a point with this video as well as saying, hey, you do not need to stack Max of Magic and pull on your Sorcerer to be effective. Notice I only have 31k <laughs> Magicka on my Sorcerer, but it doesn't matter. As long as you can stack your spell damage really high, your heals are going to be through the roof, and you're going to be outputting a lot of damage. This was just going to illustrate my point in that video if you have not saw it. It's the most recent video on my channel, and uh, I may also leave card to this as well so to start out this fight is a basic 1v3 i mean it's nothing really fancy nothing like you know game breaking doesn't go to koro's top five or whatever but kind of start out here i'm just kind of testing out the waters of who's the better player i see a bear boy over here with the bow uh, i don't think <laughs> this guy is going to pose any sort of threat and i see this guy also with a bow it doesn't really seem to be posing a threat the only one i have to worry about is the dk back here so, luckily, Iron Blood procs. I'm telling you guys, Iron Blood is the most clutch set in the entire game. I also have Burning Spell Weave up during this time. This is exactly what we want to see. We're eating a Soul Salt from our previously um, weakened opponents over here. We just ate a leave. We're able to block this. You guys have to get in the habit of just having quick reaction time because if we ate a CC here, we, we may have actually died. So, right here, the leap comes. I'm able to see it coming, so I block. Okay. So I'm getting pressured. I don't really need to pop my Resto Ulti now, but my Iron Blood is up and I have Resto Ulti on the back bar. And while your Iron Blood is up and you pop a Resto Ulti, you are immortal. Nothing is going to kill you. It is very, very rare. Something will ever kill you. You will have to get hit with like three Cold Harbor Trebuchets to really die. Plus that brings Spell Weave up and I'm using Life Giver or Life's Champion. I'm not sure which one I'm using, but it gives you a major force as well. So I'm just able to turn with no repercussions whatsoever. I am not afraid to die. I'm able to just turn and burst the person's soul assaulting me. No worries. I do have another second left of Iron Blood right here. I make a really, really risky play. This is the first time I really ran Overload. I feel like I need the crutch if I'm not going to use wards in open world. Typical, guys. If you're new to Magic of Sorcerer, you will be running Harden Ward on your back bar as well as Harness Ward or maybe even another Healing Ward. I myself am not running that because I am not running a magic, maximum magic build. So right here was a very, very risky play. We're going to go through this combo very slowly. This was, I'm not going to lie, I kind of got a little hard when I did this, okay? This, not to pat myself on the back but this was one of the most cleanest combos i've ever done in magic of sorcerer like i'm on a controller so this is a little bit more difficult to do i'm sure you guys are gonna laugh at this i mean that's perfectly fine but let me just show you like how important timing is on your sorcerer so i'm trying to pick a target i know i'm not going to go on the dk i've already made that decision so the first thing i decide to do is curse this player up right here okay I've already made the choice to go to Overload. I can only get two Overload lot of attacks off because I have 47 ultimate. That is perfectly fine. This player has 38,000 health, okay? Let me show you how quick this combo is. We're going to let it play out in full. 38,000 health and it's gone. You blink and you miss it, okay? So we're just gonna kind of go back and look at this poor guy. He was not ready for the burst like on this build. It's incredibly burst heavy. I'm not sure why people aren't really doing this. So the way I line up the combo, I had a curse up, and after you apply curse, it takes three seconds for uh, all the damage to go off. So I pop my overloads. I light attack into a proc frag. Light attack. Okay, I know this is really hard to see. And then I streak with the force balls. That's the best combo you can really do on the Magic of Sorcerer. You don't need to execute or anything of that nature. So I'll just kind of let it play back here. Essentially, you have your curse up. You'll want to uh, activate your overloads. You want to line attack, play it back one more time here. You want to line attack, frag, line attack, force balls. So. I did all that very cleanly, mind you, with a streak at the end. I, uh, the streak at the end was to make sure this DK wasn't going to leave me or whatever. 
and essentially just a 1v1 against the uh, DK player here. Um, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident I can take him. Uh, this is a stamina Dragonite, so the only thing I really have to be worried about in this situation is him popping corrosive and getting um, a really big a dizzying swing on me which is what he's constantly doing i'm trying to block most of the dizzying swings again guys you have to have really quick reaction times to dodge the leaps i go in for just a really quick overload just kind of soften him up to see um what he's capable of um, we're both trying to get away from the ads it's pretty annoying but uh we got about another like 30 seconds of this so we got poisons on us so i'm just trying to keep rapid regen up and streak as much as possible because I don't want him to be up on me because he's going to get resources back for heavy attacking. And right here, because he did not break this CC earlier. So we'll go back here. This is when you have to read your opponent when you know you need to go offensive. Because most sorcerers are not going to use their ultimate right here because you're going to get like one, maybe two lie attack offs. Okay. The reason I go offensive here is because when I streaked him earlier, right here, he's not breaking. So either he's lagging or he actually does not have the stamina to break this CC. So I try to make a guess. I'm like, okay, I don't think he has the stamina. So he's able to roll dodge a couple of times. That's fine. Maybe he popped a potion to get these roll dodges off. So even though I only have one to two overloads, I have to pressure him to make sure I can get the kill off. And there it is, boys. So play this back one more time. Just kind of in full speed just so you guys can see it. We'll recap. Essentially, I picked the weakest target I possibly could. Got to block the leaps. You just got to have a heads up at all times. Be able to pressure the people soul salting us because we have iron blood up. We make a Hail Mary play here with our overload light attacks. We have a 38k health dude here, and we just delete him from existence, right? We do do a streak at the end just to make sure there's no counter initiation on his part. And now it's just a battle of the wits between me and this stamina Dragonite. I'm keeping track of his resource, or at least trying to. Anytime he roll dodges, I'm going to try to streak. So if he road dodges and then I streak him, he's going to be stunned. So then he's going to break free and road dodge again, or he's just going to be a sitting duck. So I'm just weaving as much as I can, keep my buffs up. Again, the leaps are very telegraphed. You got to have a really quick reaction time to see them coming. I threw out some line attacks, just kind of soften him up once again. We're kind of running away from the ads because no one wants to buy with the ads. Getting resources back with Dark Conversion, plus it heals, keeping Rapid Regen up. Right here I streak, I notice that he's not breaking CC, so he's either lagging or out of stamina. So I go all in, I don't even buff, debuff, I go with overloads, even though I can get a couple of them, and I pressure this player, I'm able to get the kill. So, that's pretty much it guys. If you like this sort of content, um, please let me know down in the comments. I've, if I missed anything or I need to go even more in depth, please let me know as well. And yeah, if you want to help support the channel, the best way to do so is with a like and sub. But I also have Patreon tiers. I also have YouTube memberships if you want to help further support me. If you want one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching, I have Patreon tiers for that. The link is down in the description below. And that's it, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.